talking about worms and the wo 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 worm talk baby worm talk baby a worm talk baby you're a little tiny baby such a tiny baby and we're talking about worms this is worm talk baby this is worm talk Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Worm Talk. It's a show that I invented and you will never invent because I invented it. Do you understand? Do you get how that works? I invented this show. You didn't. You cannot take credit for it, so please stop trying. Anyway, this is a show where I talk a whole lot and you talk a little lot because you can call in and leave me a message question if the question's good and not stupid or mean, or if you're not too quiet, then maybe I'll answer your question. All you gotta do is call 678 pig slop and leave me a message that's as easy as that anyway let's start today's show in a new way by saying today's episode might be the last episode i don't know if it will be but it could be think about it anything can be the last time the thing happens you don't know what's gonna happen next you don't know if i'm gonna stop making these episodes you don't know if the internet's gonna explode so they can't be existing anymore you don't know if there's gonna be an earthquake so you might as well eat your favorite part of the meal first. Don't save it for last. That's something that I heard a long time ago, and that's why I always eat the corn hair before I eat the corn kernels. Don't save the best part for last, because you don't know what calamity is right around the corner. So this might be the last episode, or it might not. I mainly want to keep you on your toes, but also, I don't know if I want to keep doing this, because it's kind of boring and dumb. But we'll see. If this somehow can make me money so I can buy a new hat, then I'll be happy. Doesn't look like that'll happen, but like I said, you never know what's around the corner. Let's take today's first caller. I hope it's a good caller, because this could be the last episode. We'll find out. Caller number one, who do you think you are and what do you have to say for yourself? Hi, Mr. Worm. I just got home from work. Um, I was wondering, how do you make work fun? Especially when you have to deal with a thousand customers in food service. (laughs) Thank you. You got home from work and you're not having fun there, huh? That's a common occurrence, believe you me. I've never worked in food service, but it seems terrible because I've looked through the windows of buildings where people have restaurants and the people working there, even though sometimes they're smiling, I know on the inside they're screaming because there is nothing worse than having to talk to and do things for other people. This is a punishment which we all have to endure and I don't know how to escape it. It's I guess it's a little better when you get paid to do it. Most of the time, when you interact with people you don't even get to get paid but then when you do get paid for it there's the expectation of servitude that you have to please the customer if you ask me this is garbage here's the order of things that are bad corporations and companies the worst customers pretty bad too workers those are can be bad but they're better than the other two so poor people who work to have to work with food service to help customers And my heart truly goes out to you because customers are terrible and companies are terrible and all of that terribleness rains down on you. So back to your question, how do you make work fun? Well, this would depend on the kind of food service that you serve food at. If you work at a place like a a taco stand or a, a muskrat burger house, those are what's known as fast casual restaurants and you might have more leeway to do fun interesting things things. Like when you're putting sauce on the muskrat burgers, you can spell out a special note to the customer. Yeah, they probably won't see it because people eat with their mouth and not with their eyes, but you'll know it's there. And the note will go to their insides and maybe it'll have some sort of impact. Maybe their stomach will read it. Science doesn't know if stomachs have eyeballs or the capability to read and understand things. Maybe you'll make that discovery. And when you do, you'll become such a rich scientist that you'll never have to work in food service ever again. Another idea is when nobody's looking if there's a deep fryer at your work you can put cool things in it like light bulbs or magnifying glasses or you can put a part of a shoe that you don't need like the laces a lot of things can be fried and people don't realize this it's fun to batter things and fry them even if they're not edible you don't have to serve them to anybody you can just look at them afterward trust me it's fun i've done that a lot thanks for calling caller i hope your work is fun and not terrible 
people. Working is the worst. Bye. Okay, let's see if there's another caller that has today's call for the second call for today. Caller number two. What do you, who do you, what do you have to say for yourself? Hi, Worm. My boyfriend said he wouldn't love me if I was a worm. I was wondering if this is a grounds to break up with him. Thank you. Well, lucky you. You've got a boyfriend, but he says he wouldn't love you if you were a worm. The real question here to consider is, are you a worm? I'm guessing you're not because you said he wouldn't love you if you were a worm. And that's all that really matters. You're not going to turn into a worm probably. So he probably will keep loving you unless you do something mean, like spill something on him on purpose and say it was an accident. But then he finds out and later that it was on purpose and you tricked him and you just tried to make him look stupid stupid right before the dance and then everyone laughed at him and he had to go home and change his pants not only because you spilled stuff on him but because he peed oh <sighs> anyway enough about me the point here is that you have a boyfriend who does love you now so cherish that love is a gift that is given to others and it is sweet as the wind it can blow this way and that and it can disappear all at once so love love while love is lovely that's what i say and don't don't break up with him unless there's good reasons. I would say that there probably is good reasons that you don't know about yet. But when you find them out, then go ahead and break up with them. I hope this helps and I hope you stay in love together forever and have one million weddings and and enjoy every food together, but not at the first caller's food restaurant because he has they have enough to deal with with our with you not even going there. So don't butt in and make his day worse, okay? Give him a break. Well, I think that about wraps it up today. Today's possible last episode. I don't know. Who cares about anything? Not me. If you want to call and leave me a message, just call 678-PIGSLOP and leave a message. And maybe I'll answer it if there's another episode. Maybe I won't. Really, none of this matters at all. That's the lesson that I wanted to teach everybody. Nothing matters. No matter what you do. No matter how important you think it is. No matter how important your friends think it is. Nothing matters at all. Remember that. Remember it forever. Bye. Like and uh, subscribe. Like and subscribe.